Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Hit that like button, otherwise I will punch you in the throat and let's just jump into it. The first thing we gotta talk about today, and it really feels like it's a story that fit with a theme of a lot of other news this week, really focused on the policing of female bodies. Of course, a lot of that news stemming from Texas. We also had that airline news, but this story involves a Colorado man by the name of Logan Dorn. And this is because Logan went viral this week after going to the beach and becoming upset over the fact that women were wearing bathing suits. I know, those harlots, those suck you by. And rather than just talking about it, let's watch the video, let's walk through this. And so the video starts, we see Logan confronting this group of young women about what they're wearing, and uh, this happened. I'm at the beach in hey, my bathing hey, suit. Yeah, that's, that's a thong and that's a bra. That is a f***ing bathing Take suit, Take young sir. eyes into consideration. They don't need to see pornography right in front of We're not coming eyes. up to you bothering you. Please go away. You're flaunting your stuff. I'm not flaunting anything. Don't look at me. But here's the thing. There's okay. free will in America. There's no, freedom bro, of speech. You don't no, get the f*** and, and, if, and, if, and if men of God don't stand up, then our society's gonna go go down the drain because there's no morality. Right, and uh, Logan just keeps going on and on. At one point, he also starts evangelically mansplaining to the women that the reason they're showing off their bodies is because they aren't sure if they're pretty enough. The girls also ask him, why are you focusing on us? Look at this person, look at this person. You're being a hypocrite. They say, what would you think is appropriate? He initially says a one piece. They laugh at him. He then starts stuttering and says, you know, a two piece also, uh, something more modest. Right, and following this video going viral, we saw a lot of reactions on social media being in the defense of the women. Then, after help from internet sleuths, two of the women posted a follow-up video identifying Logan. And in that video, also showing that they were wearing rather standard bikinis, not thong-style ones like he claimed. Though, the girls also noting that it shouldn't matter either way and pointed out that plenty of other people at the beach were dressed that way as well. Right, basically saying that they felt like they were targeted because they were the only group of all women. Also, since being publicly named, Logan's posted several TikToks of his own telling his side of the story and refusing to apologize. Saying that he was in this area with his relatives when one asked if they could move spots because some college-age women were showing too much and adding. And so right then and there, I just had a, uh, just a righteous anger come over me. Um, and also just a, a boldness by the Holy Spirit to go in to confront these ladies and to speak truth that, hey, what you're wearing is not okay for a nine-year-old boy or a six-year-old boy. Um, and reason being is because coming from being introduced to pornography at a young age, it destroyed me. And I... <laughs> In that moment, just a righteous anger of to defend and protect um, young eyes came over me. Right, and I think as a lot of you would expect, that response then earned him even more criticism, especially because he went on to make some transphobic remarks as well. Though you won't see those reactions on his TikToks because he's blocked all comments. His response is also seeming to just fuel the outrage rather than it just dying down. In fact, you saw many on social media reaching out to his alleged employer, a Christian construction company called Mighty Hand Construction. That company going on to make a statement yesterday saying they were now aware of the incident and adding, we began an investigation this morning which has resulted in the immediate termination of Mr. Dorn. Mighty Hand Construction does not condone Logan's behavior in the videos, nor do his actions reflect our values as a company. You know, Personally, my reaction to this story is, yeah, good. I, I know there are gonna be some people that are like, ah, oh, what about freedom of speech? Which, once again, I would say, of course, yeah, there is freedom of speech in this country, but also not freedom from consequences. Like if one of my employees was out there and harassing women in public because they, he didn't, he wasn't okay with the way they were dressed, I would let that person go. Absolutely, and based off of the words that are just kind of falling out of Logan's mouth, both in the initial videos and the videos after, I I, I really, Logan, I, I think that you need to see a therapist about your relationship with women. You're really out here seeming like a toxic fuckhead who's excusing his fuckhead behavior with religious righteousness, and, and you're overcompensating and projecting, and it's just, it ain't a good look, Logan. I understand, I know Logan, or people that are gonna try and defend Logan, they're gonna try and make it about religious versus non-religious. I know tons of religious people that have opinions and feelings, but they're not out there harassing people in public. It's your actions, Logan, and Logan, those actions have made you our douchebag of the day. Congratulations, buddy. Then, moving on to the entertainment section of today's show, we have two entertainment stories that could kind of be summed up with the uh, the line, uh, your opinion doesn't matter, which is kind of a dickish way to say it, but it, it hits the right notes. Right, we've kind of talked about it before, unless you're a part of a person's core audience, you can't really impact their career for the most part. Starting with TikTok sensation Addison Rae in the news, fresh off the release of her new film, He's All That, which is the remake of the 90s classic, She's All That. And critically speaking, it got its fair share of bad reviews. A lot of people 
people taking jabs at Addison's performance. But that doesn't matter because her core audience was there for her. According to Netflix, over 55 million households are expected to watch that movie in its first four weeks. It also reached number one in 78 different countries, which are huge, huge successful numbers. And appears to be part of the reason we're seeing the news today that Addison Rae has now signed a multi-picture deal with Netflix. And not only for her to star in the movies, but executive produce as well. And then in similar news, but obviously a much different situation, you had David Dobrik. David, of course, had come back to YouTube successfully after what had felt like a, a certain period of time where it felt like there was just scandal after scandal. Ultimately, that hitting its peak when you had a woman accusing Dirty Dom of raping her while she was with the group to film a video. As well as that instance where David Dobrik almost killed Jeff Wittick in a crane accident. But still with that, even after a successful YouTube return, there were a number of people going, okay, well, can he get that mainstream success? With the news we're seeing this week, wonder no more because he signed a deal with Discovery Plus. Recently, he was a part of Shark Week. He also has this new Discovery Plus show where it's a 10 episode travel series called Discovering David Dobrik, which actually surprised a number of people, not because he got the deal, but because it was a travel show. For those that don't know, David is a dreamer. He's a DACA recipient with actually Discovery's plug for the show on Twitter saying, as a DACA dreamer, David Dobrik was unable to travel outside of the US until now. Join the vlog squad on their journey to secure his green card. Then in business and tech news, I got a story that, that you're either gonna react to in one of two ways. You're gonna either be like, yes, I, I thought that maybe another big company should take a swing at this or no, stop trying to make this a thing. And that is because it turns out the rumors are true. Facebook and Ray-Ban have debuted a pair of smart glasses. And these glasses, which went on sale today at the same time at the announcement for $299 can do several things, including play open air sound, you can take calls, but by far the most notable feature is that they can take pictures and record short videos. And depending on who you are, one of the highlights of these models or one of the biggest points of controversies is you may not even have realized that there is a camera in this model. Or with some arguing that these glasses can easily be used in large group settings to take photos of people without their knowledge. Though here Facebook itself is pushed back saying that they don't do anything your phone can't already do. Also noting that when you take a picture or a video, a white LED light will turn on. And with that, Facebook even arguing to some degree, it's more overt than what people are doing with phones. But still, as the National Consumers League, an advocacy group that Facebook actually consulted with in the development of these glasses said, you put these out in the wild and people are gonna use them the way they are going to use them. And so with these glasses, I wanna know your thoughts. Do you see this as a big privacy concern? Are they different than a phone? to you? Are you somewhere in the middle? Why, why not? Personally, I'll say I'm very excited to try these out. If you've watched me for a long time, you know that's not a surprise. I was one of the first people with the Google Glass. I, I really wish that it actually worked out. I also tried Snap Spectacles. I, I was very let down by that. As a dad who loves to take pictures and videos, but also at the same time, you know, I want to be in the moment. I, I hate having to whip out a phone. This seems like a great thing. The interface and the review videos that I've seen thus far, it seems a lot more intuitive and clean than Snaps. No offense, Snap. You know, regarding the privacy aspect, yes, I, I totally understand that, but I, I am also more in the camp of, I, I think there's already stuff out there, whether it be a phone or actually like more spy gear that people could use now and probably do so more effectively. But that's a story, my opinion, and of course, now I pass the question off to you. Are you interested by this? Do you think this is a nightmare? Why, why not? Let me know. But from that, I wanna take a quick second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Raycon. Co-founded by audio engineers and some of the music industry's elite, Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise while prioritizing their customer experience from start to finish. Recon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring your favorite content with you wherever you go. I use mine all the time, whether I'm listening to podcasts, or you got those endless Zoom calls. They were great for listening to the playlist that I had on the plane. Which, by the way, I'd love to add some more of your music suggestions, so leave some comments down below. And not only do they look amazing, but they sound great with a 32-hour battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and they come with a bunch of gel tips for your comfort. And unlike some of the other brands, they don't stick out of your ears for a noise-isolating fit. And right now, Raycon is offering 15% off just for you. Just click that link in the description down below or go to buyraycon.com slash Franco to get 15% off your order today. And don't forget, they have a 45-day free return policy. So what are you waiting for? Then, in absolutely massive news here in California with potentially massive implications nationwide, depending on which way the vote goes, we should talk about California's recall election. It's just around the corner. The official date is September 14th, but actually mail-in ballots were sent out a while back. And so you should be voting now if you can vote, right? Because notably, as we've talked talked about, this recall election has two important questions. We're asking Californians, do you want to recall Governor Gavin Newsom? Yes or no? And second, who would you want to replace Newsom if he is voted out of office? And if 50.000001% vote yes, the new governor, regardless of how much of the vote they get, as long as they have the most out of everyone else listed, 
they become the governor. Right now, if Newsom was recalled, it looks like Republican Larry Elder would become the next governor of California. But according to 538 right now, it looks like he would get 25.6% of the vote compared to his next biggest competitor, Kevin Paffrath, listed at around 7%. Which is why both locally and nationwide, you have a lot of Democrats ringing the alarm. With some, among other things, calling this a bold-faced Republican power grab, right? Hoping the Democrats don't turn out, don't treat this as a real threat, then using the recall rules to put in a Republican who may only get 20 to 30% of the vote, especially because there does appear to be a genuine worry that Dianne Feinstein, of course, the Democratic senator in California, that she is old and could potentially die or have to leave office for health reasons. Larry Elder would then have the ability to put in a Republican senator and break the 50-50 split in the Senate. But of course, that's in the very specific situation where that happens and not the just stuff that he stands for. Yeah, that's why we've even seen the likes of AOC as well as Bernie Sanders speaking up for Democrats to vote no. There's probably a ballot in your mailbox on a recall election. Please find that thing, vote no, stick that sucker right back in your mailbox. It's also why I've seen leftists who I know hate Gavin Newsom's guts even telling their people that watch them to vote no. Yeah, ultimately have to wait and see. If you're a Californian, definitely make sure you get out and vote. I already have. One of the things that makes our country this country. Be heard. Then we had China in the news, not only continuing, but ramping up their crusade against video games. Right, last time we talked about this, they heavily restricted how long minors can play online, but now they're reportedly also slowing down approvals for future online games. With the South China Morning Post saying this is an attempt to curb gaming addiction among young people. Also in a public statement yesterday, China's propaganda department said that it and other authorities would seriously deal with any violation of their rules. With regulators reportedly summoning Tencent holding and NetEase, the country's two biggest online gaming companies. And there, they reportedly reminded both companies to limit how long and when minors can play games online. Also telling the companies to change their game design to be less addictive, though uh, no specifics have been listed. With both companies later confirming that they'll comply with the government's demands, I imagine because they don't want to get disappeared. With that, we saw shares for each plummeting, Tencent falling as much as 8.5% in Hong Kong and NetEase 11%. And really, with China, we should expect more and more to come from this. Then, let's talk about vaccines and mandates. On the business side, yesterday, United Airlines announced that any of its unvaxxed employees who've been granted religious exemptions from taking the COVID vaccine, they'll be placed on temporary unpaid leave starting October 2nd. With United's Vice President of Human Resources telling workers, given the dire statistics, we can no longer allow unvaccinated people back in the workplace until we better understand how they might interact with our customers and their vaccinated co-workers. Also, on top of that, United said that if an employee's request for a religious exemption is denied, they'll need to get vaccinated within five weeks or they'll be terminated. Meanwhile, employees who can't get vaccinated for medical reasons, they'll be put on temporary medical leave, but whether they get paid is based on their union's collective bargaining agreement with United. As far as when the impact of employees can return, United did not give a specific date. Instead, saying the pilots, flight attendants, gate agents, and airport customer service agents with exemptions can return once the pandemic meaningfully recedes, with mechanics and dispatchers able to return after the company implements new testing measures and other policies. And with all this, of course, United's not alone here. We've seen similar news with Delta, American Airlines, though, of course, each a little bit different. Also, regarding United, reportedly estimates say that employee vaccination rates are extremely high, with United saying that most of its workers who were unvaccinated when the mandate was announced have since gotten vaccinated. And as far as the reaction to this specific story, one of the main things that I saw were related to the religious exemptions. We saw many people cheering this move, people saying things like, this is essentially calling the religious exemption bluff. United is simply testing their faith for whatever religion they are claiming, as well as people saying, stop using religion and freedom as an excuse to put others at risk. However, you also have people saying things like, this is cruel, as well as making a choice to remain unvaccinated is becoming very expensive. And while these decisions are in the interest of public health, they lead to a very slippery slope. I do hope people don't lose their trust in vaccines or the concept of a free society. Though we have seen pushback there with people saying making a choice to remain unvaccinated should be very expensive. Those doing it should bear the burdens of their choice, not the rest of us. With people also comparing the price of a vaccine compared to all the other treatments. Some like radio host Howard Stern going even further, saying given the current situation that anti-vaxxers should be denied hospital care once infected. Well, you know, hospitals around the country have had to have very tough conversations on how to prioritize treatment for unvaxxed people in case systems get overwhelmed. To be clear, it would be illegal in many cases, and also in others, it would just be highly unethical. Also, we've got the government side of this story with President Biden expected to sign an executive order later today that will mandate the vast majority of federal workers and contractors get vaccinated against the coronavirus. Reportedly, the requirement will apply to employees of the executive branch, including the White House and all federal agencies, as well as members of the armed services. So Congress and the federal court system reportedly not included in this order, but that is still incredibly significant. You're talking about a workforce of over 4 million people. And beyond that, Biden's order will 
also reportedly direct the Department of Labor to draft a rule requiring all businesses with 100 or more workers to ensure that all their employees either get vaccinated or face weekly testing. As well as mandate that the more than 17 million healthcare workers at hospitals that accept Medicare and Medicaid funding also get vaccinated. And while probably like a, a lot of you, I'd like to just not even think about COVID anymore. All these changes, the mandates that we're seeing, it's happening as the spread of Delta has pushed America's daily average caseload over 150,000 for the first time since late January. But more importantly, daily hospitalizations are also averaging more than 100,000 for the first time since early February, and roughly 1,500 people a day are dying. But a figure that mirrors numbers not seen since March before vaccines were readily available. And that is essentially where the situation ends. And you know, I was just, I was just thinking about this today and it's not a fully formed thought yet. You know, it's weird. Like you're probably as emotionally exhausted as I am, or probably even more emotionally exhausted from the last two years. But I just told you something killed 1500 Americans yesterday. And I, and you probably didn't blink an eye, but if I said that of almost anything, else. I feel like the majority of people would be like, holy shit, this cannot stand. We have to do something. Like, think about it. Obviously, it's a different situation. We're talking about an attack on our country and there are other aspects at play, but every two days right now on average, we're losing as many people as we lost on 9-11. That's an insane thing to think, but I, I feel like we're just so numb from the last two years. I don't know. I guess that's where I'm going to end this one. But, uh, you know, ultimately with this story or really anything else stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. And as always, I just want to make sure I say thank you for watching, liking the video, subscribing, doing all the good stuff. My name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you next time unless I go away forever. I won't. My ego couldn't take that.